basic algebra skills. We'll look at adding and subtracting like terms, multiplying and dividing. Adding and subtracting, we're just looking at how many lots of particular things we've got. So if we look at the first example, this says 3 times x, which means 3 lots of x. This is 2x, which means 2 times x, or 2 lots of x. So when you see this, you say, look, I've got 3 lots of x plus 2 lots of x. How many lots of x do I have? I've got 5x. So we're just counting lots of a thing when we're adding and subtracting. And we can only group them up if it's the same thing. x is the same thing. So I've got 3 lots of x plus 2 lots of x is 5 lots of x. So the thing is, sorry about the bell, when you're adding or subtracting like terms, that is, it's the same pronumeral with the same powers, all you do is add or subtract the number in front, the coefficient. And if you need to use your calculator, then you say, well, look, I know this is going to be 3 plus 2 which is 5, so I've got 5 lots of x. In this one, the big trick to remember is that when it's just y, that means one lot of y, so there's a 1. This means 6 lots of y take away one lot of y. If you get stuck, don't think y at all. Think 6 pencils minus 1 pencil. Really obviously, you've got five pencils. You've just got to remember to write Y and not pencils. That's all we're doing. It's how many lots of a particular thing, in this case it's Y, do we have. So you've just subtracted the coefficients and said that's how many lots of this thing I've got. Now sometimes they give us harder ones where there's two different things, X and Y. So in that case You've got to say, this is like saying, I've got two pens plus three pencils and someone took away four pens. Now that's not very logical because you'll end up with negative pens. But you can't add pens and pencils. They're two different things. So you're just going to say, I'll end up with this many pens and this many pencils. I'll end up with this many X and this many Y because X and Y are not like terms. So this says, now you can rearrange if you want to make it easier. Put all the like terms together and remember the sign goes with the thing that comes after it. So this negative belongs to the 4x. Rearrange it if you want. That's 2x minus 4x plus 3y. You add or subtract the coefficients and it's a really good idea when there's negatives just to get your calculator. 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4 equals that's negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 lots of x plus 3y. And that's as far as I can take that because these are two different things. And I'm just saying how many lots of them I've got. So for this one, again, I've got different things. I've got 6 lots of x squared plus 3 lots of x squared plus 4. Now that's not an x squared, that's just 4 on its own there. So whole numbers just do their own thing. How many lots of x squared do I have? 6 plus 3 is 9 lots of x squared plus 4. So adding and subtracting like terms, you're just grouping together and counting how many of each thing you've got. Don't ever change the powers of the pronumerals. This is not x plus x is x squared. It's just how many lots of x do I have? 3 lots plus 2 lots is 5 lots. Now that's different to multiplying and dividing. In multiplying and dividing you can change the powers because multiplying and dividing is different. 3 times x times y. Well in algebra we don't use times signs. So we check if there's any things that are the same that we need to multiply together. Sorry about the light there. Because if there were two x's, I'd multiply them together and get x squared. But there's not. So this is just written without the time signs. 
Sorry, I don't know why the light's going funny. That's 3xy. 2x times 3y. Now really the easiest way to do this is to deal with the numbers first, the big numbers in front, and then deal with the letters. And you can even rearrange it if you want. And Because this is 2 times x times 3 times y. We're going to do 2 times 3, we're timing the big numbers together, and then do times x times y. Now the numbers 2 times 3 you can do. That's going to be 6, then x, y. Sorry, I should have left an extra line there. Just get a line between that because that's a different question. Here, 3x times negative 4x. You're going to multiply together the big numbers and then you'll multiply x times x and that's going to be x squared because x times x is x squared. We can do that. Now if you're not sure on timesing the numbers, use your calculator. 3 times negative 4, oops, you can't see it, there we go, equals negative 12. So you multiply the big numbers out the front of them, negative 12, and then x times x is x squared. So this one here, 4 times 3 is 12. Now if you're not sure about x squared times x, you could just write it as x squared is x times x, times another x, and you can see really clearly that that means it's going to be 12 x cubed. It's the number of x's that are times together, because timesing is different to adding. And dividing is very similar to multiplying. You divide the numbers out the front, and then cancel out any letters that you can, and we'll show you how. 12x divided by 2. Divide the big numbers out the front. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and you've got an x left. Most of the divisions are going to be in fractions. 6x divided by 3. Do 6 divided by 3, that's going to be 2. And you've got x still. You can tell that x goes with the 2 because the big number's left there. 10x divided by 5x. If you want, you can use your calculator to simplify that out. 10 divided by 5, or use 10 over 5 if you want. And you'd get, if we did 10 over 5, 2. And the number has to stay where the bigger number was. So see, in this one, the bigger number's on the bottom. So if you, you'll get a fraction here. But the big number's on the top, which means the answer to ends up on the top. Now, when there's letters on the top and the bottom, if they're the same, you can cancel some out. X cancels out an X, and the answer's just 2. This one here, deal with the number fraction first. Simplify it on your calculator. I've got 4 over 8 equals 1 half. That means I'm going to end up with a 1 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. Now, there's no x to cancel on the top, so I know I'll keep an x on the bottom. Look at the y's. y squared means y times y. So if we weren't certain, we'd expand that out and write y times y on the top and y times x on the bottom. And then you can see, you can't because I've written it really small, that we can cancel out one of the y's on the top with one of the y's there on the bottom. There's only one. But I can't cancel out that other y because there's nothing there. A y won't cancel an x. 
So then we see what I've got left. I've got 1 times y, which can be just y, but you could write 1y if you wanted, and 2 times x is 2x. So if you're not certain about cancelling, expand it out. y squared is y times y, and that will let you see that you can cancel.